Hello students. Today's lecture is on genetics practical and we will be learning about genetic ratios and chi-square in this lecture. So the practical says to study genetic interaction involved using seed mixture and the gene ratio to be calculated using chi-square analysis. So in this practical you will be provided with a question which will be a standard question and the question will be you are provided with a mixture of seeds to fit into one of the modified dye hybrid ratios two or three types of seeds each representing a progeny of f2 generation of a dye hybrid cross are given classify the mixture by phenotype this will be your first question second question is work out a probable segregation ratio third question is give genetic basis of segregation fourth is uh, find genotypes of parents F1 and F2 generation. Fifth is find genotypes of uh, genotypic and phenotypic ratio of F2 generation. And sixth question will be propose the model and use chi-square method. So how to do this practical? So for this practical, we given some seeds which will be of different shapes, different colors. And suppose this is a hypothetical case where you are provided with um, you are provided in a petri plate or in a bottle uh, two kinds of seeds and these are if you see uh, with your eyes so you can uh, classify this uh, seeds in any type suppose i classify the seeds as maroon seeds uh, and white seeds and suppose you are providing when you count the number of seeds so first step is uh, that you you see the seeds and just track observe them carefully and see how many kinds of seeds are there and then then give those seeds some name for example if you see there are two types of seeds so you can classify them as color or shape so suppose in the petri dish you are given with uh, two kinds of seeds and you have given the two phenotypes you, are, you have given them uh, the name as two phenotypes, maroon seeds and white seeds. And when you count them, you find there are 28 maroon seeds and 21 rajma seeds. So the first question is, classify the mixture by phenotype. So you have already classified the mixture on the basis of phenotype as maroon seeds and white seeds. Okay, so this is your classification based on phenotype. Then part 2 or the question number 2 was work out a probable segregation ratio. So how to do this? There are two methods to do this. First method is you count the num total number of seeds. So like you have already counted that there are 28 maroon seeds and 21 white seeds. So you just total them. Total is 28 plus 21 is equal to 49. So the first step is that you find out the master number. So you just divide the total number of seeds by 16. Why 16? Because uh, 16 is uh, the total of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio, which is a typical dihybrid Mendelian ratio. So when you count 9, uh, which is a typical F2 dihybrid uh, Mendelian ratio. So 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. When you can count them, now 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 16. So from there, this 16 number has come. So you just divide the total number of seeds by 16. So here in this case, we are getting 49 by 16, which is 3.062. So we will uh, just uh, um, uh, turn it or convert in whole number. We will not take fractions in this practical uh, because uh, to avoid any complex uh, problem. Okay, like Mendelian, he avoided fractions. So we will be converting them into whole numbers, all the fractions. So 3.062 will be taken as 3 and this is your master number. Mm -hmm. Now you divide each of the phenotypes by the master number. So step 2 is uh, first phenotype uh, will be divided by 3. So this is 28 maroon seeds. So 28 divided by 3 is 9.33 which is converted in uh, whole number. So this comes as 9 maroon seeds and B your second phenotype is white seeds. So this will be your 21 by 3. So this comes as 7. So what is your ratio which has come now? 9 maroon is to 7 white. 
so what is the probable segregation ra ratio we have uh, calculated it is 9 is to 7 so this was the first method um, uh, to calculate a probable segregation ratio and this is not given in books the method which is given in the books this and this is the second method of uh, finding the probable uh, segregation ratio so like maroon was 28 and white is was 21 and the total was 49 and you know where this number 16 has come so we will just uh, divide each phenotype by the total number of seats and then multiply it with 16 so 28 by 49 into 16 is 9.19.14 this will be taken as whole number 9 and white will be 21 by 49 into 16 this will be 6.86 which will be equivalent to 7 as whole number so from this method also 9 is to 7 has come so your probable seg segregation ratio is 9 is to 7 so in your re record files you will uh, explain by both the methods how to calculate probable segregation ratio now part 3 of the question is explain genetic basis of segregation so now like 9 is to 7 is our probable segregation ratio and we know uh, from our theory which which we have learnt in theory classes that 9 is to 7 is your complementary gene ratio so explain the genetic basis of uh, segregation uh, in terms of non-allelic interaction we will have to just define what is complementary ratio and explain the mechanism so for this particular case because this is complementary genes so we will just define complementary genes are those genes which give the same phenotypic effect when they are present separately but complement each other when together and then give a new altogether new effect. So this is part 3 of the genetic ratio question. Now part 4 is give genotype of parents F1 and F2 generation. This is part 4. So for this you need to uh, just revise what we have learnt in theory so like here you can just uh, because uh, in this question you have got uh, nine maroon seeds and seven white seeds because your ratio is nine maroon is to seven white so in this case both the parents will be white and when these two white uh, these uh, these two whites uh, the genotype we take as capital M capital M small w small w and small m small m capital W capital W so here in this case you see that when these two parents these are homozygous in nature and they are giving white but this white is different um, uh, the white color is governed by different set of alleles so in first parent it is white is given by capital M and in second parent it is given by capital W so these are non alleles when these non alleles are present separately they are giving the same effect and in f1 when hybridization takes place these non alleles are coming together in this dihybrid so they are complementing each other capital m and capital w they are complementing each other to give a maroon uh, phenotype so this dihybrid uh, will give maroon phenotype now in the checkerboard uh, when we do f2 after selfing of f1 parents we get this checkerboard and in this all those genotypes which are marked in red those genotypes uh, which have both capital m and capital w they will be giving the maroon phenotype and all those genotypes which have either capital m or capital w they will be given white phenotypes so this is your 9 is to 7 ratio which will come and then you can split uh, 9 maroon and 7 white and the genotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is uh, 2 is to 1 this you know how to uh, find out the genotypic ratio part 6 of this question is chi square analysis so in this there is a sub part which says propose the model and use chi square method so we will be uh, for this we will have to make a table like this which have many columns the first column is phenotype so we have already uh, segregated our phenotype in two types 
maroon and white and so the second column is observed number we know that observed number is of maroon is 28 and white is 21 expected ratio we have already calculated and that is your 9 is to 7 so this is your proposed model the fourth column is of expected number this you will calculate by this formula ratio of phenotype upon total ratio into total progeny so for maroon it comes to be 27.56 because uh, we have proposed the ratio as 9 upon 16 16 is the total ratio into 49 which is your total progeny so now the next column is deviation deviation is the formula is observed minus expected so deviation uh, in our case will be 0.44 because our observed is 28 and minus 27.56 comes out to be 0.44 now the next column after deviation is your Yates correction so Yates correction is uh, is a um, is applied in those cases where the degrees of freedom is 1 and what is degrees of freedom it is the number of phenotypes minus 1 so the formula is n minus 1 so in our case uh, the proposed model is 9 is to 7 and there are two phenotypes so our degrees of freedom will be 2 minus 1 1 so in those cases where degrees of freedom is 1 the chi-square analysis is applied so in our case uh, the chi-square analysis uh, Yates correction will be applied and Yates correction is a way for uh, to bring the values near zero so in this case we will uh, just avoid the signs and we will minus 0.5 from deviation which has been obtained so in our case the real deviation will be now 0.44 minus 0.5 for maroon which comes out to be 0.06 and for white it will be uh, 0.43 minus 0.5 so this is comes out to be 0 0.07 now the next column after calculating deviation in both the cases where uh, whether uh, yes correction is applied or not yes correction will be applied only for uh, degree of freedom 1 and if it is more than degree of freedom 1 it will not be applied so the calculation the next column is d square by e and the d square by e the formula is that you will just multiply your uh, deviation value uh, so in the maroon case it is 0.06 into 0 0.06 upon your uh, e expected value which is 27.56 so this comes out to be 0 0.001 and the white is 0 0.07 into 0 0.07 upon 21.43 which comes out to be 0 0.002 so now we will just add both these values and you will get the chi-square value so in this case the chi-square value comes out after adding both 0 0.001 and 0 0.002 as 0 0.003 now since our degrees of freedom is 1 so we will see uh, this value under probability degrees of freedom table and we will see that uh, we will uh, see whether the value uh, is below the permissible limit which is your 0 0.05 probability uh, so if it is below that it or less that uh, we say that our proposed model is correct so our conclusion will be since the chi-square value is 0 0.003 for 1 degrees of freedom which is less than 3.84 so the proposed model is accepted and this is the case of complementary chains. Uh, this uh, chart uh, which is given in all genetics books so this is here like for our degree of freedom was 1 so we will see the value under 0 0.05 and this 0 0.05 is 3.84 suppose our degrees of freedom is 2 so, so we will see 5.99 so we, we have uh, just seen that the value is less than 3.84 so our proposed model is correct so we will discuss this uh, more in next lecture and uh, i hope the concepts are clear to you regarding this particular case so thank you and we will be meeting in next lecture